Dax Gim, the studio director at uh, What Boy Games. Hi, I'm Adam Doherty. I'm the game director at What Boy. So, can you guys talk about your studio and its inception? Like, how did how did What Boy Games start? We, uh, Adam and I, met working at Rocksteady on all of the Batman Arkham games from what 2009, 2010, all the way through to 2016, and then we set up What Boy following that. So, sort of, I think February 2018 was the a new, yeah, the original birthday of what boy yeah i didn't i, I think you left a couple of years before me i didn't yeah, get to 2018. I, I left after batman arkham vr so all of the um marketing and community and pr for, for the three core batman games and then arkham vr and then i left after that but you know triple a is a fairly exhausting monster to be part of for a long time and uh there was always something really exciting about the indie space that i think both of us were really drawn to and uh so our first game, Trolls of Fire, we launched into Early Access in 2019, and that was a turn-based single-player multi-character deck-building adventure game. And then uh, Nexus 5X is our, our follow-up. So um, we're sort of sticking in the strategy space. We kind of um, set up what boy with the aim of kind of creating replayable, approachable um, strategy titles, game, games you could play over and over again, rather than just a sort of uh, a single one and done story. And yeah, really sort of wanted what boy to be there to to allow us to kind of work on the the games we wanted to make with a smaller team and create these these kind of new experiences, which I think we've we've done a good job of in our first two games. For people who aren't familiar with Nexus Five X, talk about what this game's all about. Yeah, so Nexus Five X is uh, well, the Five Xs are uh, explore, expand, exploit, exterminate, uh, express. So the idea is to take the traditional Four X game along with some kind of learnings from kind of face-to-face -face tabletop games uh, and kind of boil that down into a, a game that can be played a competitive, either single player or multiplayer in about an hour. Um, so take as much as the complexity, the deep sort of empire building from a 4X game, but kind of condense that down into a format that you can play with friends or on your own in a kind of in an evening, uh, even once or twice, if you've got the time, rather than something you have to sort of commit hours and hours and days and days to. What was your biggest lesson from Trials of Fire that you brought over with you to Nexus 5X? I know they're different games, but I'm sure you guys learned something. Not to write so much dialogue, because localization is really complex. Although there's still quite a lot. We came pretty uh, close. Next, I know. <laughs> Wait, that's a lesson we didn't learn. I think that the kind of core ideas of creating really deep games that are sort of respectful of people's time. I mean, we're no longer kids, right? So we've got kids of our own and there's a lot of demands on on everyone's time more and more with, you know, just modern lives being so busy. So the kind of core idea of the games that we make are about delivering really, really high quality game experiences in much shorter time boxes. You know, Trials of Fire was about that sort of, you know, roguelike replayability, but built on very systemic design so lots of procedural attitudes to ensuring that content always feel, feels fresh even though you're playing multiple runs and so i think that translation of um, procedural design and replayability but ensuring that every time you play the game feels really really fresh on every single run also is is really relevant in the design of, of nexus 5x because not only are so many of these features of the game different every time you play the people that you play against may be different and the decisions that they make mix it up as well so having a, a game that is very compact and short form but that feels like a new game every single time you play is i think present in both trials of fire and nexus 5x just from a purely sort of technical and design point of view, it was, it was the first time either of us have even had ever worked on a turn-based strategy game as well. It's a genre I've always been a fan of, but not something I worked in my professional life. So a lot of it was just kind of learning a lot of how things work, uh, figuring out uh, what works best, how to, how to get the player to interact uh, with the world. And yeah, as Dex says, the idea that we kind of took into Nexus 5X was this idea of taking a game uh, like an RPG or a 4X uh, and kind of condensing it down into into a sort of short playable format. And we felt that was a really good way to, to also bring it into, into the multiplayer space, uh, which I think is an area where 4X games traditionally struggle. Can you guys uh, kind of elaborate on what you drew inspiration from when the design and the visual aesthetic and the visual aesthetic of Nexus 5X? I see a little Star Trek in there, you know, maybe a little Starcraft <laughs> as well as like civilization vibes a little bit. 
Yeah, I mean, a lot of it is obviously from the... Because we get the game is in the Stellaris universe, so a lot of the look and feel of the ships, the factions, the different planets and stuff is is kind of inspired by the the big uh, Stellaris um, Grand Strategy game. But I think a lot of... Um, we wanted to kind of put our own uh, what boy spin on it. That We have more stylized characters. Like We kind of put our, our leaders... Uh, front and foremost and so yeah i think a lot of the inspiration was just trying to keep it sort of clean accessible make everything kind of very visually um, obvious but also uh, beautiful looking we have uh, an awesome art team who've done a great job on kind of just merging the ui the the star field keeping it kind of seamless as you go in and out from combat or just zooming in to look at your planets up close there's a lot of information there and this is the thing about 4x games they tend to be very complex which means they're very time consuming on the whole and so they don't really suit multiplayer experiences because if you've got a someone who's sunk hundreds of hours into a 4x game how, how do other people join that experience so by shortening the time frame, that opens the gate to it being a multiplayer game in much the same way that tabletop games are, because you can't get hundreds of hours ahead when the game only lasts an hour, an hour and a half. And then the opportunity there to, to replay number, a number of games in a single game night session has that tabletop feel about it. But what that means is um, time becomes very, very important. and the time pressure when you play together with friends online in a multiplayer session of Nexus 5X means that you're making fast decisions. So the UI and all aspects of the visual presentation of the game need to be really instantly readable. And there's a lot of information at play. So you need to be able to look at your options and then make a call. And I think, like Adam said, the art team have done a great job of sort of taking all of those informational concepts and visually presenting them in a way that you kind of know what you're doing. And the more you play, you sort of develop this muscle memory about playing this edict and then that leads to this action. So the first few times you play, there's a lot to get your head around, but very quickly you, de you start to develop that muscle memory. And then once you get good at the game or once you're familiar with it, you can play very, very fast. And uh, that in itself develops this sort of momentum and inertia about the game that is pretty unique. When did you get good at the game? <laughs> like I said, when you get good at the game, right, okay. I'm, I'm still on that path. <laughs> no, I'm a huge advocate of uh, tabletop games of 40k, Age of Sigmar, War Machine, Hordes, X-Wing, like all those games, I've played all of them. And like, you're right, like when you're on a timer, every move becomes more and more important. You may even get mm. one move that turn, but if it's a 45 minute game, it has to count, right? Yeah, yeah. So speaking to that, like you, you keep mentioning tabletop inspirations. Can you talk about some of the board games you looked you looked to when you were designing this? And would your game work in a tabletop setting? I mean, yes and no. Uh, I'll come back to that. But yeah, I think uh, it's funny you mentioned kind of games like kind of Warhammer, X-Wing, um, that kind of games. I kind of see like those are the kind of games I've always really wanted to get into. But never, never had the time or the group. So I'm, I kind of, I, I'm more, I play a lot more sort of just single session board games where you don't have to sort of create an army in advance or a, a fleet in advance. Um, as I said, I, I was, always sort of dabbled in those games, but never really got deep. But where, where I kind of, my real passion is, is in kind of these one-off sort of big tabletop games, um, games like Oath, Eclipse, Twilight Imperium. These kind of uh, games that that are not only you're playing the game on the table much of the game is is how you play the, the people around the table how you kind of interact how you talk how you can connive to kind of outmaneuver other players even if they're a better player than you you can kind of uh, use diplomacy underhand tactics get other players on your team so those kind of games were the kind of in terms of tabletop were, were the real inspiration behind kind of taking that that kind of social face-to-face uh, -face play and merging it with a kind of slightly more deep 4x game that you can get with the, the kind of computer handling uh, a lot of the background stuff um, calculating the battles um, all your incomes and stuff like that which which would be a bit too complex for for a tabletop game so yeah to kind of go back to the question i think you could kind of it, it would be a weird to, to convert it to a tabletop game because as you say it's quite it is so inspired by by the game by the tabletop games that it would it would feel fairly cyclical uh, and you'd lose a lot of the stuff that i think makes it unique like the fact that we we concentrate so much on making sure that your turns are completely simultaneous you can kind of you're never sitting around waiting for everyone you can just get on with your own stuff which which wouldn't work in a kind of physical cardboard and plastic product it's funny you mentioned like how people like you know they like the like i'm one of those people i like the idea of tabletop gaming right i i love age of sigmar i have four armies i've played the mm. game less than five times 
<laughs> I have I have all the X-wing ships. I've played with them like two or three times. It's we like, like the idea of it. Right? We like the models. Really. We like them pulling them out. But then like when it comes to the time to do it, we're like, ah, we'll do it tomorrow, next week, and then next week becomes two years. So my other question is like, how do you guys deal with balance in a game like this, especially with up to eight players online? We we throw it into early access and let the community feedback. I think that was something that was really critical to us. And you know, talking about lessons learned from Trials of Fire, like how just how valuable an early access phase can be because you are exposing your game in this sort of live fire arena to people who have got no agenda to love it or hate it. You know, they are just giving you the feedback that, that the game deserves. And so doing a a five month early access phase and then building that community on discord so that we've got really really kind of solid daily real-time conversations with with new gamers and and players in the community means that um as much as we really focus on all of the balancing requirements that we're aware of having another 500 people saying okay i played and i did this this and this and then this is what happened like that data is invaluable the, the secret is we kind of do our best and then we try and get as many people to play it as early as possible. Um, even before early access, we, we did um, close private tests where we kind of invited people from the community, from our old community and their friends and stuff like that to play the game before it was, before the de before the first demo to really kind of, as Dak said, to put it out there and see, see what happens if people who have no idea why you did it like that or if they get their hands on it they can find all sorts of crazy ways to break it so we listen to their feedback we collect a lot of data online about kind of which which technologies people pick which factions which leaders um do well and yeah we use all that together to try and get it balanced and it's astounding that you then have an opportunity to meet players who play the game at a level that we don't even come close to and it's just astounding how brilliant and how quickly they can become brilliant with a game they've never played before and we've been building it for two years and we don't even come close it's because people always compare like are you the, you're the developer you should be good at the game but i like to compare that to like sports like if you're a football coach how good would you be on the field right you're, yeah, that's yeah. not your job your job <laughs> yeah. is to organize right your job is to design <laughs> not to be really good at the game right yeah that's the yeah. whole point I, I see it more as the guy who draws the we're the guys who draw the lines and put <laughs> yeah. up the <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. you yeah. play out there you challenge the players you know yeah, exactly. hold on <laughs> can't use that yeah. um, so your game is out on pc now on steam um but i have to say like these games i feel lend themselves so well to a tablet experience do you guys have any plans to do it on like ios or android tablets uh not at the moment we're kind of focused on the steam release are you steam deck verified at the at this time of the interview uh we're not now at the moment yeah uh, but it does play well, just with the, we have a uh, native eye, some of the button prompts and stuff like that um, in terms of performance. And it does, actually plays pretty well, looks great on the Steam Deck. Um, just a few few issues to sort out. It's a big, making a game is a big undertaking. Yeah. It's a big yeah, undertaking. It yeah. <laughs> Where else can they go to like find information? You guys have a website, Discord, forum? Discord's the big place. So um, the, the Nexus 5X Discord is where we hang out all day and that's where all of the other players are as well. So there's really awesome um, categories there, whether it's just general conversation or specific strategies or gameplay discussion or, you know, one-to-one -one DMs with, with us. Um, it's a really great community and they've helped us a lot throughout early access and launch to, to get to the game to where it is. Do you guys have any plans for DLC, new races, anything like that down the pipe? Or are you just focused on making the best experience you have right now on Steam? Yeah, at the moment, we're just, just focused on the uh, the 1.0 launch. And it'd be, just as a fun question, I have to ask, is both of you worked on arguably one of the most popular Batman games in the world. What's been the biggest difference going from a AAA project studio like that into Nexus 5X as an independent game studio? I think, I think as Dax has kind of alluded to a few times, I think that the biggest difference um, that we've noticed is the kind of direct communication with the fans through early access, through the through launch, through past launch, through release, people playing the game, feeding back, having having a really kind of close and personal connection to, to a lot of members of the community on both games has been really different uh, than, than working on AAA where you're kind of, there's a there's a few layers, uh, there's PR, there's marketing, there's the forum moderators between kind of you and the, and the players. Whereas when we're, we're just like a, a sort of two, three, four man team, it, there's no one else to do that. So we're kind of directly involved every day with players of the game, um, talking to people, discussing strategies and balance issues and bugs and problems. So that's been the biggest difference for me. The sort of marketing PR community side of Batman, you know, whenever I wanted to 
release a trailer or screenshots or some sort of new idea or talk about some kind of feature of the game, whether that's at E3 or, you know, when we were hanging out at Comic-Con in 2011. You know, it's not just us as a developer saying, okay, let's let's talk about the Batmobile now. We've got to go to DC Comics. We've got to talk to the Warner Brothers theatrical teams about what, what are their plans for Batmobile in the movies? And is there any... Would we be drawn into a conversation about theatrical stuff, you know, the film side of the Batman franchise that then could leak in a way that could affect, you know, what's happening for, for the movie side. So the complexity of how do we even talk about this game means you don't just have an idea and then stick it on Twitter. You have to have a series of meetings and it has to be escalated and you've got to kind of ensure that everyone who could have an issue with it is cool with it and then you can start talking about it and that can take weeks particularly in the lead up to a big event like a comic-con or an e3 because it is all about kind of bringing your a game you've got to come with a new reveal you know really blow people's socks off with something exciting so what those big beats are you know you plan them out years in advance and they can get really easily derailed and that's why leaks are such a massive problem because it just throws all of your plans uh, to the winds. But what we're doing, you know, it is genuinely as simple as Adam and I saying, oh, we just put this this thing in the game. All right, I'm just going to post that. I'm just going to capture it and stick it on Discord. And it's a three minute conversation and it goes straight to the people who are ultimately going to be playing the game without any consideration for who might get pissed off about it or who might have something to say about it that really direct conversation is something that you only really get as an indie developer